Larry London. Welcome once again to Border Crossings here on VOA Television. We have with us today a singer-songwriter who has a brand new album out. It is an EP, and uh, we're going to be talking to Mackenzie Grant this hour. Mackenzie was from Syracuse originally. She now calls Nashville home. We'd like to welcome Mackenzie Grant. It's great to have you on the show, Mackenzie. Thanks, Larry. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Now, some artists take a couple years off in between albums. You took 15 years in between albums. That's kind of a long, long wait for a, a, your, your sophomore album. Yes, it is. Um, you know, I uh, I had, you know, kids were part of that. Um, I have three amazing kiddos, um, but I also... Um, I took a break from basically the music business. Um, when I had the kids, uh, I, I got kind of burnt out, um, with the business industry side of it. And, um, then went to pursue another passion of mine, which is, um, social justice and, uh, working with children and families and, uh, education. And so, I went back to school and got a master's degree in uh, professional school counseling and um, did that for a while. And uh, then when the pandemic hit, I um, I was already thinking of taking a break from that. Um, and I started writing these songs and uh, I called up my friend, Phil Dubnik, who is a producer in town and said, you know, I just want to record these songs. And we recorded them, cut to, um, you know, a few months later, uh, I signed a record deal with Blackbird Record Label in L.A. So it was very... Wow. <laughs> well, that's the whole story there. I might as well it was go crazy. Home now. You just told your story. That's the 15-year that's the break uh, <laughs> that's the, story. Wow. So. In, in, in all the five minutes, that was 15 years. Now, yeah. I, I do want to ask you, let's, let's go back a couple things. You said you have three kids. And mm -hmm. from what I read is you have quite a, an age span. You have a high schooler and a middle schooler and a preschooler. Yes. Yeah, so she's now in kindergarten. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I still I have a high, a high schooler, a middle schooler and a kindergartner. And um, yeah, my boys are from my first marriage and um, we divorced um, about 13 years ago. And mm -hmm. so um, we, uh, you know, it I, I remarried had another child. And so, um, yeah, so a lot happened in those 15 years, you know, personally for me. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's kind of crazy to have <laughs> wow. every, every developmental experience you could imagine having <laughs> at the same time. Yes. Well, uh, I have two we, that are 10 years apart, so I, I totally get it, but yeah. wow, that's, that's a handful three and you're working as a counselor as well. Yeah. How does raising children and working with children affect your songwriting come into play with what you do professionally? Oh, uh, well, um, working with kids is, um, it's, it's so healing for me. It's just like, it's, 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 a, 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 it's as much of a passion and joy for me as, as music is. And, um, it's odd. I, I get kind of, you know, I, I go into the same zone with both th things. Um, but you know, uh, the, the counseling work that I had been doing prior to uh, taking a break and working on music, I was working with um, uh, kind of the, the, one of the most underserved populations in Nashville. Um, it has the highest incarceration rate, highest poverty level. And I was working with very young children dealing with a lot of um, uh, generational trauma and, you know, their families. And, um, so it, it was, it was really difficult to work with kids who were so high need and then come home to my kids who really had everything. Um, uh, and uh, so it, it, it was hard for me. Um, and I, I basically, you know, got burnt out at a certain point. Um, because I, you know, I could tell I, it was hard for me to be home with my own kids and be present for them. So, um, this album, these songs really were a way of me kind of processing all of that and being able to, um, transmute it into something, um, 
uh, resilient and, and inspiring and hopeful. Um, and it, it really did that for me. So do you use the music in your, when you were working with kids and counseling, did, was that part of the counseling is because music is healing. Music can be therapeutic, even for the writer who can express feelings and thoughts and mm -hmm. emotions musically that, uh, otherwise yeah. it, it would be difficult to just blurt out how you're feeling that day, but you can yeah. do it in the song. And do you use the music that you write and the songs you create and Therapy? I didn't. Well, I didn't use my my songs um, in school counseling, but um, especially for little little ones um, who can't always communicate their emotions and don't always really know how to identify them. Uh, you know, they don't really know what they're experiencing. Um, and they can come out all sideways, their emotions. Um, music is a is such a tool for them for expression. Um, mm -hmm and uh and release and so i i used a lot of music um when i would work with you know a, a group of kids and you know um so yeah i and i you know we would make up silly songs and stuff like that but um yeah definitely using songs that they like and they enjoy um uh yeah so i want to get a little therapy right now would you sing a song for us Sure, sure. Okay, tell me about the song you're going to do. Okay, so this song is called All of This, and um, this was the first song that I wrote, <laughs> pretty much, um, and it's the first song on the album, um, but it's the first newest song that I wrote, and um, it's, it's about being okay with holding the dark and the light at the same time. So holding space and acknowledging and honoring a lot of the pain I was seeing and also honoring a lot of the joy and um, beauty that I was seeing and being able to hold all of it and mm -hmm. uh, take it all in and express those things myself, mm -hmm. being okay with my shadow side and, um, uh, and the sides that I'm, you know, more proud of that we have to be okay with all of it and owning all of it and, um, you know, owning the parts of us that we ourselves that we don't, you know, like as much. Um, and so that's what that song is about is kind of being able to hold both realities at once. All right. It's called all of this, all of this. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's listen to it. Here is Mackenzie Grant. All of this from the new EP, which is called wonder world. could do it better I'm not at my best maybe I'll never be but with some years behind me I'm starting to see a lot of the wrongs I put on you Of 
Crossings, and that's all of this. We're with Mackenzie Grant, and the new EP is Wonder World. Now, how would you describe your sound? I mean, what would you say your music, what lane does it fit into if you had to put it in a lane? Yeah, I would say um, I'm, well, I, I think I'm a singer songwriter first and foremost. Um, so, uh, you know, in the vein of, uh, you know, James Taylor and Joni Mitchell and, um, Oh gosh, Jackson Brown, uh, a lot of those folks, just kind of a class. Those are the people who inspired me. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, and I always think that singer songwriters write from personal perspective and write from their, their personal passions and what they believe in. So, um, yeah, so I would say I'm a singer songwriter. Um, I'm, uh, more Americana, so kind of pop, folk country all mixed together um okay. which is americana uh mm -hmm. and americana is 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 now be, has become such a broad genre that mm -hmm. is i just i'm so proud to be part of the that these groups group of artists um mm -hmm. who are uh kind of collecting um music from all different you know genres to make mm -hmm. into something uniquely American, um, and, uh, our own. So well, that's, that's well stated because I always ask, what does Americana mean mm -hmm. when I talk to an artist who says I perform Americana? Um, because we're broadcasting to an international audience in a hundred different mm -hmm. countries worldwide. Mm -hmm. And you hear the term, everybody mm -hmm. kind of has a handle on what pop music is. Mm -hmm. But, uh, when you talk about Americana, what does it mean? But you, you mentioned that it's a, a, a variety of genres, uh, you know, a variety of sound. Yeah. You sound like a child of the seventies when you mentioned Jackson <laughs> Brown and James Taylor and, and Joni Mitchell, these are all superstars who came out of the seventies. Yeah. I, I, it's funny. I always, I, I joke and say like, I, I really should have been, um, I, I should have been coming of age in the seventies, um, because I, I do feel a real kinship with those writers and performers. Um, and it's, it's just always what I've been drawn to. Um, so yeah, it, I, I think the, the lyrical and melodic aspects of their style, um, is, is what really appeals to me. Um, and, and I, and I think also a lot of their commentary on society and the world and social justice, um, is also something that is, is a big part of, um, what drives me to write and, mm -hmm. um, to connect with other people in that mm -hmm. way. Would you call yourself an activist? Um, that's a good question. I would say yes. Uh, I, I would say, yes, I am an activist, mm -hmm. um, especially in the work that I do with, uh, kids, um, mm -hmm. for sure. And, and families. Um, mm -hmm. I think I, I always, I, 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 I think that calling, uh, if a person is an activist, I consider that as like a high honor because they're kind of putting their money where their mouth is and not just, you know, giving donations, but they're really walking the walk in their daily life. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I've got a lot going on. I wish I could do more. Um, but yeah, I, I would say I'm an activist. Mm -hmm. And when you listen to today's music and you compare it to the music of the seventies, uh, and I was a child of the seventies as well. I grew up in that era and started my radio career in the seventies when FM came out and it was the Eagles and Carol King and Fleetwood Mac and, and that sound. Um, so tell me, you know, I mean, as far as, the music that you've experienced, how do you feel when you listen to what's out there today versus what you were inspired by? I am a big fan of um, what's out there today. Um, and I, across genres, um, I love, um, there's a lot of really young artists that I just love and I love what they're doing. Um, I, I listen to a lot of hip hop and rap and, um, 
to like uh, world music. Um, so uh, especially having teenagers myself, mm -hmm. um, they like to hear stuff that I'll, yeah, I know they'll play me something like J. Cole or something and I'll go, hmm, that sounds like, and then I'll pull up something from, you know, De La Soul or something. And so I, I feel I, I'm very excited about new music and, 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 you know, pop music. Um, mm -hmm. and I think there's a lot of folks out there who are, um, doing really innovative, interesting things. Mm -hmm. Um, and I like that the, that the boundaries between genres are really being blurred now. Mm -hmm. And I just, I love, you know, when I hear a hip hop artist bringing in folk sampling or Celtic music or any, you know, any of that, it's just like, I think that's incredible. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, I, I have a, I, I, I think there's a lot of that still happening. Mm -hmm. Would your kids say you're a cool mom or would they go, <laughs> oh, mom, you know, which one is it? What do you get from the kids? I mean, mom's in music, mom, you know, talking J Cole here, talking rap, hip hop. What does a high they, school student think of mom and right. They, my own kids, um, uh, no, I don't, I wouldn't say they think I'm cool. Um, they think I am palatable and enjoyable. Um, uh, palatable. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, they, they put me in my place quite mm -hmm. frequently. Um, they keep it very real with me. So if I ever think like, yeah, I'm, I'm hip, I know what's going on. They're like, <laughs> Don't ever say that again, first of all. And second of all, you're not, and we don't want you to be like, you're not, don't, don't go down that, that road with us. Right, so, your mom, you're not our friend, right, you're our mom. Right. I mean, I, they, they know that I get things that maybe some of the, some of their, their other friends' parents don't get, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, my job to them isn't to be cool. It's to just be their right. mom. Um, do you, do you run your song by your kids before you? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Um, I, especially I've been writing, um, more new stuff now that is, um, I would say more, definitely more on the pop side. Um, and, uh, I really, I like them to hear it. They're, they've got great taste in music. Um, and they're both, uh, really they're musicians themselves. Um, so they, they'll tell me the truth. Um, yeah. you know, that's, that part sounds weird or this sounds dated or this, you know, or that's like, like this sometimes they'll look at me and genuinely be like, mom, that's really cool. Like that sounds yeah. great. So, um, yeah, I feel like they, they tell it to me straight and, um, yeah. I'm always showing them stuff. And if they're musically inclined, you can put them on a song. I am trying to get my 14-year-old uh, to, um, I'm going to start playing out live again here soon. And I'm trying to get him to, he, he's a drummer and I really want him to be my drummer. Um, but we'll see. So Yeah, got to promise yeah. him an Xbox or something. So right. <laughs> Mackenzie That's Grant is our guest here on Border Crossings and Wonder World is the name of her new album. So are you going to do another song for us now? Yeah, absolutely. What's this one called? Okay, this one's called Coffee and Wine. And um, it's about uh, about my, my going through a divorce mm -hmm. and kind of getting to the place where you realize, um, and, and really in any relationship, when you realize that um, even you can do everything right and, and try your hardest and it, it can still not work. And um, kind of coming to terms with that and um, and just kind of how you've coped in in a relationship. Mm -hmm. so. Coffee and wine. Coffee and wine. All mm -hmm. right. Sounds like an interesting combination. Here's Mackenzie Grant. Let's check it out. Coffee and wine. Assessing, I keep surveying, I keep amassing all our days, all the coffee and all the wine and all the ways we pass the time. Drink the coffee 
to stay awake I drink the wine to dull the pain and I'm looking back across the time all the coffee and all the wine I wish I had Border crossings, and that's coffee and wine, not necessarily on my breakfast menu, <laughs> but it, but it's a song about the struggles of a divorce. And, you know, and I know Adele has been talking about her new album and how her divorce impacted the album. You go through painful times, difficult challenges, and and sometimes songs come out of those experiences. And I guess that's the case here with this particular song. Mackenzie Grant is our guest. And I would be interested to know when you put out your first album 15 years ago mm -hmm. and you've gone through all of these experiences and working with kids and the counseling and the challenges that counseling a, a, a group of children who are coming from a low income area and have other issues going on in their lives. How do you think the first album and the second album are, are different or are they not different? Oh, well, I think, um, there, I would say they are, they are similar in that I, I really write from my own personal truth that I feel are universal truths. So I think, um, the first album was uh, about me becoming a new mom and, um, about, uh, you know, looking at my own parents in a different way. And I, I think they're just, those are just kind of universal things that um, we can all relate to being a parent, um, um, thinking of our family of origin differently and, and um, just how our, our lives change over time. Um, so I think that kind of was a snapshot of me then. And, and this is a snapshot of, um, of me now. And, uh, but, but it, I, I feel very much like the things that I've written about are things we can all relate to. So, um, yeah. So, and, and I think, uh, with doing the counseling, uh, it really kind of broke down any walls or, or, you know, this kind of self-critical voice that I had for so long, um, that would, would edit me as I was writing and, you know, well, is that good enough? Is that, and honestly, after working in counseling, um, you know, teaching kids to be, be brave enough and confident enough to be their authentic selves, it really helped me. It, it taught me too. And so in writing, it was just like, I, I need to be authentic and as authentic and real as possible in all of this. And, um, it just freed me to, to be able to write without this overly critical voice. Mm. And you have decided to, along with a collection of originals, include one cover song, which was by Joni Mitchell, mm -hmm. Borderline. Why did you pick a song from Joni Mitchell of, of all of the songs on your album? This is the one you said you want to cover. Yeah. Um, well, this, so Borderline, uh, 
It was on, an, uh, I believe it was 1994, the album came out called uh, Turbulent Indigo, uh, that Joni Mitchell's album. Um, and that album really changed, changed the way that I looked at songwriting. Um, and uh, I mean, she's, she's kind of, uh, she's obviously a legend and um, an icon. Um, and you know, every time I listen to her music, it's like a masterclass in songwriting, um, mm -hmm. especially lyrically. Um, and the lyrics in that song really, uh, even though they were written, um, in 1994 are extremely timely to what our country and our world has been experiencing, um, in the past, you know, politically and, and socially in the past, um, you know, four or five years. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, really about, um, you know, kind of the, the fracturing of, of groups of people and, um, mm -hmm. uh, and also just kind of the division of politics and her, this, the, the, that song is really about, uh, is kind of a warning, a, a cautionary tale of like, um, we create these borderlines, um, and just be careful because, when you stand so firm and create this borderline, you're separating yourself from other people and possibly losing access to what it means to love other people and have compassion and empathy and find, f find ways to connect with them so that we aren't so at each other's throats mm -hmm. um, and judgmental. So um, that, I, that's why I chose it because I just felt like everything going on in the world, I, I wanted to write a song like that song and I, I heard it and I was like, I can't do any better than her. So I'm going to just cover it because it's, and I wanted more people to hear it because it's just a beautiful, amazing song. So and they just honored her at the Grammys. Yes. Uh, so yeah, are you planning to tour now, now that you've got uh, a new album out? Is touring part of the plan? Well, it is. Um, and it, I mean, it's going to be, um, it, it kind of piecemeal here and there. Um, mm -hmm. Mostly because I'm still, uh, I'm still working. I'm going to be going back to working with kids again, um, uh, older kids, teenagers um, in the fall. And so I'm going to try to do some shows um, in the spring and the summer, and then um, maybe, you know, a couple more in the fall, but I'll be, I'll be busy again doing that stuff. So um, yeah, so we'll see. But yes, I, 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 I hope to, I really would love to. In our last few minutes, can you do another song for us? Absolutely. What's this one called? This is called Putting Down Some Things. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's about kind of what I was talking about earlier with um, losing uh, that voice in my head that was uh, so critical um, and harsh on myself and learning to love myself warts and all kind of thing and um putting down putting down all of that negative um you know self-talk and energy that i had had for so long um and being okay with really really loving myself and allowing myself um to be okay with myself and uh so that's putting down some things put down some things here's mackenzie grant on border crossings <laughs> I don't need anymore Waking up from a dream That was not my own Walking into the day With the weight off my shoulders Put down some things I don't need anymore Gotta trust and believe That there's a kind of to myself, make it through another day, just another hour, maybe just another moment, but it'll be a moment I can see clear right as I'm putting down some things I don't need anymore, waking up from a dream that was not 
Walking into the day with a weight off my shoulders, put down some things I don't need anymore. Your voice can feel so far away when no one wants to hear the words you say, but I do. I can hear you singing sweet and true above it all. Cause I'm putting down some things I don't need anymore. Waking up from a dream that was not my own. Walking into the day. Some things I don't need anymore. Border crossings, Mackenzie Grant, and put down things. Putting down some things. Putting down some things. I, I do that all the time. I'm putting down some things. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Mackenzie Grant's with us, and uh, Wonder World is the name of the new album. And you're classically trained. You went to the Berkeley School of Music, I read. And then you originally started off as a songwriter there in Nashville. Yes, I did. Yeah, I was. And you decided uh, you wanted to get in front of the microphone and sing the songs. Yeah, I, I um, in Boston, I got the attention of a, a producer here in Nashville. And he said, you know, have you ever thought about coming to Nashville? And I uh, was not, um, I I hadn't really, but I came and visited and fell in love with it and stayed and um, really, really liked a lot of the songwriters here that I connected with. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, one of the quickest ways to get your songs heard is to just get up and do them. So <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> what do you think you're better at, songwriting or singing? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I guess technically... I would say singing uh, only because I I studied voice for a long time um, and uh, learning how to use my instrument um, is something that uh, was for my whole life um, from, you know, my parents encouraging me to teachers and mm -hmm. whatnot. So um, and I, I honestly I always feel like I, I could always be a better writer. Um, I like my voice and I think it's hard to improve on anyone's voice, you know, as, mm -hmm. as it is naturally. And so, um, I think, you know, I, I, I'm always okay with my voice, my songwriting. I, I feel like I'm still learning and a student. So. Well, it's very nice to meet you and to hear you sing, you know, on our show live and, and to be able to get to know you. There's so many more questions I could ask and so much more, I'm sure as we peel away the layers of the onion, but unfortunately we're out of time. But I did want to say thank you and, and also ask if there's a website or social media site or where do people go to connect with Mackenzie Grant? Yeah. So uh, I'm MackenzieGrant.com on the, you know, that's my website. You can really find everything there um, on my, my YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter. Uh, on Instagram, I am MackenzieGrant.music. Um, and that's also on Facebook. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's where you can find me. Um, and can you spell Mackenzie for everybody? Yeah, Mackenzie. sure. It's M-A-C-K-E-N-Z-I-E, mm -hmm. uh, Grant, G-R-A-N-T. Yeah. So it's Mackenzie mm -hmm. with an A-C. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, I, that's where you can find me. Mm -hmm. Would you like to say anything to the troops who are tuned in or the worldwide audience before we go? Yeah. Um, I'm uh, so grateful for, uh, you know, the world starting to open up again um, in terms of us all being able to reconnect in person. And um, yeah, I would love to be able to um, do some traveling and experience other cultures again, um, because I think it's just so wonderful for all of us to learn from each other and um, especially musically. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully connecting more worldwide again. Mm, well, that's great. Thank you, Mackenzie Grant for joining us today. Really appreciate it. 
The new EP is called Wonder World. It's Mackenzie Grant. It's available on Spotify and iTunes, and you can get it just about anywhere you can find music these days. My name is Larry London, and you are watching Border Crossings on VOA TV.